Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're on the eastern side of the village of Frogham, which is about two miles southeast of Fording Bridge at the western edge of the New Forest. And we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular route eastwards along Hampton Ridge to Ashley Cross and then south through the Amberwood and Older Hill enclosures before heading back along the banks of Latchmore Brook to Ogden's. Now uh, regular viewers will be saying, hey Dave, haven't you done this walk before? Well we did in fact do this walk about three years ago. It was the first walk that we ever did on the channel. But on that occasion, we went on a sort of uh, anti-clockwise direction. Today, we're going to be doing it clockwise and a slightly different route as well. And I will promise you two things. Firstly, some excellent views. And secondly, there are lots of things to explore. Now, I'm filming in the middle of the summer. At the moment, it's a glorious sunny morning. There is forecast cloud later on, so we need to kick on. So do join us. Well, I've parked my car at the Abbot's Well car park, which is just on the eastern side of the village. In fact, I don't think it's a Forestry Commission car park. Uh, we are actually just outside of the old New Forest perambulation. The boundary is just a, a few yards over to my right. Uh, we are still inside the New Forest National Park. The boundary to that is... Uh, a little bit over to the west, just uh, goes all the way up nearly to the River Avon. OK, well let's uh, kick on and very close to the car park, there's a little gem to look at and here it is, <laughs> isn't that delightful? I say it's uh, just uh, opposite the entrance to the car park, it's called Rose Cottage, uh, pink thatched cottage and well, it was famous for the fact that it was once lived in uh, for about three years by the world-famous herbalist and prolific author Juliet uh, de Barakley Levy. <laughs> I hope I pronounced her surname correctly. I'm going to call her Juliet from now on. <laughs> she was born in 1912 and she studied to be a vet at Liverpool and Manchester universities, but became an expert using herbs and natural remedies for treating sick animals and humans. Now her book, which I've got, called Wanderers in the New Forest, actually provides a vivid description of her life in the cottage here. It was published in 1958. And she actually described it herself in the book as, and I quote, a typical old New Forest cabin, a low square clay and pebble made hovel place beneath a thatch of straw and heather. She lived a frugal life, drinking water only from the abbot's well, which we'll see shortly, and eating food grown in her garden or foraged in the forest. And she learnt a lot about herbs and techniques for keeping animals and humans healthy from the New Forest gypsies. And she lived here with her two children. She was married, but her journalist husband didn't like her country life and uh, she didn't like city life, so they lived apart. So I say, we've got the, the cottage here, and in the grounds next to it, there's a, a much newer property. That's called the Well House. And I believe both the Well House and the cottage were up for sale recently. Well, what a sweet little cottage. Juliet uh, spent her last years actually on a Greek island. She died in 2009 at the age of 97, very much testament to her herbalist and Spartan regime. Anyway, just a few yards to the uh, east of the cottage is the Abbot's Well, which is just behind me here. It's actually a natural spring at the edge of an escarpment, and there's a plaque I see that dates it to at least 1215 and it's on the old road to Southampton that cross the, the forest. And I think it used to be called Allen Well, but now known as Abbot's Well. And there's actually a couple of um, sort of openings. On the left-hand side, I think that's where the animals drink from. And then over here, if I gently open up, there we go. And I think the humans are supposed to drink from that, but... <laughs> I don't think I'd be tempted. But having said that, um, 
I believe that Juliet used to uh, get her water, or well, all her water, from here every day. I tell you, it is beautiful this morning. It's only, what, 25 minutes past seven. Best time to come when there's no one else about, apart from the odd donkey or two. There's a little cutie behind me here. <laughs> oh. You can't be very old. I guess it's quite a popular watering spot here for a lot of the ponies, but <laughs> so I won't get uh, any closer than this, but what a beautiful sight. Okay, well, just before we start heading up to uh, go along Hampton Ridge, I'm going to take a little diversion because there's something I want to show you just to the south. So we've done this little detour, we've uh, just come off uh, a place called Windmill Hill at the top here and in front of me here is Windmill Pond, although Juliet in her book always referred to it as Windsmore Hill and uh, Windsmore Pond. Whether there was a windmill at the top at one stage I don't know, I mean uh, I wouldn't have thought it would be for corn because uh, there's no arable land for some distance, maybe it might have been used for pumping water, I don't know. Anyway, why I brought you here is uh, this, believe it or not, is where Julia used to bathe pretty much every day. I mean, I know it doesn't look very appealing now and uh, it's pretty dry. Um, it's a rain pond. I don't think it's fed by a spring, but it is quite deep in the middle there. Well, I know it might not look much, but I think there's a bit of a, a magical feel to this place. And, uh, well, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read a little passage from Juliet's book. I've got a, a paperback copy myself. Now, uh, I'm going to need my glasses for this. <laughs> However, even without the sunlight, there was the greatest happiness provided for us in the New Forest by a strange place known as Windmill Pond, locally called Windsmore Pond. On the map, the area is marked as tumulus, but there, in a wide-stretching hollow, after the rains have been, forms a great pond, like a mirror from the look of the grey waters rising amongst the reeds. The entire base of that pond being grass, it is possible, when the rains have given the water sufficient depth, to swim there slowly and gaze down upon flowers like mere things shining at the bottom, especially the white daisy-like chamomile and the golden pin cushion centres and the square form blossoms of sinkfoil amongst its silver fern-like leaves. And all that stretch of water, being of the rains, is like silk upon our bodies. What worries and troubles those waters of Winsmore Pond have taken away from me. I say, if you ever get a chance to read this book, do. It really is a great read. I'm now going to make my way back up Windmill Hill. I'm going to go out the slightly trickier way over. Well, in the winter this would be bog, but I can just about walk on it at the moment because uh, there's a few things to have a look at. In fact, just down by my feet here, looks as though it's quite watery, springy, so I'm guessing that uh, a little bit of water from that does feed into the pond. Well, here I am, folks, standing on top of a bog. I say in the middle of the summer, so I'm not sinking in, but uh, when you get up close, it's, uh, it's certainly worth it because a few things to look at just down here. 
Now that little white um, flower that Logan is just about to eat <laughs> is um, it's called cotton grass basically because it looks like uh, cotton from a distance and it really loves um, wet ground and this year in the new forest there's been loads of it um, yeah, I've been mean, speaking to some old timers they can't remember seeing quite so much and then look yes just just next to it this little plant here looks quite pretty this is called sundew um, and it might look pretty but it's a nasty little bit of vegetation because what happens a fly will land on this sort of sticky bit here and get stuck and then gets eaten by the plant oh it's a, a lovely time to be out in the new forest early July foals everywhere and this little cutie can only be a matter of uh, weeks old I should imagine very pretty I'm not going to get uh, any closer than this it's quite happy there and uh, mum not too far away well uh, leave that foal and it's mum there so we're now back on our proper route as it were heading up a track that's going to take us up to um, Hampton Ridge where we should get some great uh, views in fact the track that we're on is uh, one of the main authorised cycle routes through the north of the forest. made it to the top of Hampton Ridge. A good excuse for a pit stop to admire the view that's just behind me. Now hopefully this is going to come across okay on the GoPro. It is a very hazy morning. So um, there's Abbot's Well in the distance and the track that we've we've come up and this is looking across that's Ogden's in that direction and you've got this beautiful valley and there's a, a brook called Latchmore Brook that goes across the bottom and we'll actually be um, walking along there on the homeward leg we'll be sort of walking in that direction the trees in the far distance that's the Hasley enclosure and we've been in there in a previous walk and and then just in front of me here there's this little um, spur that juts out from the ridge and if you look on the map it's actually called Thompson's Castle as far as I'm aware there's never been a castle there indeed there's never been a defensive structure and it's quite common uh, to have place names in the New Forest that have got castle in the name uh, Lucas Castle for example further south again never a castle there and in this particular case it just may well have been a spur that was named after a local man called Thompson I don't know ah uh, sorry folks another another pit stop for a for a view this time this is on the, the northern side of the Hampton Ridge so just before we carry on I thought we'd do a little detour to look at this because it really is quite stunning you've got this another valley and there's a, a brook ditch end brook that flows along the bottom and uh, <laughs> the ridge at the far end that's God's Hill Ridge and I just about make out some cars on the top that's the Roger Penny Way one of the um, main roads that goes through the, the northern end of the forest and then high up on the ridge there well God's Hill cricket pitch is just on the top and the God's Hill enclosure are the trees in a very far distance and there's also another reason why I wanted to come here because there's something interesting to look just down at the bottom of the valley in front of me now this is what I wanted to look on the northern side of the ridge it's a uh, were the remains of a Victorian volunteer rifle range probably built in 1894 so this bit here was where the actual targets were although I reckon the, um, the concrete bit was probably a little bit more modern and obviously the, uh, the bullets used to go into the bank here and the actual firing positions would have been some yards away over to the west 
uh, on the other side there. And yeah, I can just about make out there's a little brick building or brick structure into the side of the uh, the hill there. Let's go and investigate that because I think that's got something to do with the firing range. And here we are. You see it's a brick structure. Now of a, an old 1897 map it shows that there was either a marker or spotter's hut uh, and also a magazine very close to each other. There's some dispute as to whether this is the magazine or the, the spotter's hut. But um, I mean, it looks quite in good condition, doesn't it? It has been refurbished, I believe, by a, a historical um, society fairly recently. Oh, look, it's one of those geocache or geocache boxes up there. Well, I've never actually looked inside of one of these, so... Right, what do you reckon? I don't think there's anything to eat, unfortunately, but... Well, it looks like we've got a, a tape measure, a marble, a few business cards, and then what have we got in here? Looks like a roll of paper. Ah, oh, looks like people just put down dates and their name when they uh, they find it. Well, there you go. I've always wanted to know what was inside one of these. I was hoping it would be a bit more exciting. Perhaps a £10 note or something. Well, we're continuing to make our way along Hampton Ridge. We've uh, just passed a, a trig point, and as is tradition, we have uh, bagged it in the usual manner. Now, just behind me here, you can see this massive concrete arrow, and uh, it's all part of, uh, well, when this whole area was once a, a bombing range in the Second World War. Uh, I've actually done a, a video walk which goes into the bombing range in more detail, so if you'd like to know more about that, do check that out. But uh, this arrow here was illuminated. Uh, I think they had diesel generators to, to light it up, and it was basically pointing out towards targets to the south, which in turn were illuminated. So I won't go into any more detail because uh, it's all covered in that video. But now that the sun is peeking out from those black clouds again we've got some stunning views to enjoy yeah that's better now the the sun is making it uh, a lot clearer that haze has now disappeared somewhat everything looking very lush and green out there and again right in the valley there I'll see if I can take a photo because it's some distance away, but loads and more of that cotton grass. It almost looks as though <laughs> there's a frost on the ground there. It's all white. But oh, it's beautiful up here. It really is. just been enjoying a lovely stroll along Hampton Ridge with fantastic views either side. I reckon we've been going about a mile or so. So this is about as far east as we're going to go on the walk. And we're now going to start heading southwards into the Amberwood enclosure and for some uh, quite spectacular woodland. Here we go. Right. Well, hopefully you can see me in here. It's quite dark underneath all the trees, but I said just heading into the Amberwood enclosure. 
which was uh, established or planted up with oak and pine in around about 1815. A lot of the pine was cut about 100 years later. But just as I come in here, if you look at an old map of about 1897, just to the left of me here was a lovely cottage called uh, Amberwood Cottage. Uh, sadly, it was uh, destroyed uh, when the area was a, a bombing range in the Second World War. Um, and it was demolished shortly afterwards. But uh, so I did come across a couple of pictures of it in a book. It was quite a substantial cottage. It was a woodsman's cottage. So there's nothing there now. But there is some evidence just in front of me of where the stable block used to be. Yep, and here we are. So you can see still some, well, what must remain of the edge of an old wall and perhaps some foundations, I say of the stable block there and then there's a few bricks over there. I said if you, if you didn't know what you were looking for you could easily miss it. Okay so we're now going to continue through the Amberwood enclosure. Well now Logan has just uh, spotted something, uh, found it just a few yards off from a footpath to the south of the where Amberwood Cottage used to be and it looks like it's some sort of uh, base for a building um, and the f yeah, just the fact that there are some metal bolts on top, I wonder if maybe a wooden building was bolted onto the top of it. I'm guessing it well, perhaps might have been a, an animal um, shelter perhaps again linked to the cottage, I'm not sure um, I've never actually spotted this before on previous walks, so it's always nice when you come across something new on a walk. folks we've been doing a little bit of exploring. <laughs> I'm still in the Amberwood enclosure. Now at one stage Amberwood, the Older Hill enclosure, Slowden enclosure to the south, Pittswood to the north. The whole area was well known for um, Roman pottery kilns and at least nine have been discovered and excavated over the years. Um, I don't exactly know where they are um, Hayward Sumner did a lot of excavations in the uh, early uh, 20th century. But from time to time, if you keep your eyes peeled, you will come across the odd little bit of broken pottery, a bit of shard that's just been discarded. And often the best place to find them are places like this, where a tree has fallen over or been blown over in the wind, the roots exposed, and it brings up a lot of... Uh, earth and gravel that hasn't seen the light of day for decades um, and this is a prime example and I haven't been here long and I've been having a little look and I think I might have come across a little bit of pottery that was stuck in there I'm no expert but it's um, got a glazed look to it it could be a stone of course but there we go I don't know if you're going to be able to see this up close but there's the glaze certainly it's the right color um, and it looks like that could be the top or that it could have been attached to something as I say it could be a stone <laughs> I'm no expert right let's kick on gosh look at this poor chestnut you'd think it would uh, well its days would have been numbered when it was blown over probably in a storm with all its roots up there but enough of its roots are still in the ground for it to continue to live with new branches poking up. You've got to give it 10 out of 10 for just sheer willingness to survive. <laughs> Whew, a lovely bench to uh, sit down on and rest our weary limbs. What a lovely bench it is too. It's in memory of a chap called Eric Ashby. 
He was a naturalist, uh, conservationist and wildlife filmmaker and he moved to Linwood, which is just south of here in 1952 with his wife Eileen and uh, he founded the New Forest Badger Group in 1969. He actually made one of the first wildlife films in colour called The Major, the life story of a village oak tree in 1963, although the BBC didn't uh, actually broadcast it in colour until 1967. But uh, he died in 2003, but a lovely bench here and there's some lovely carvings, there's a badger on one side and just behind me there's also a fox. Now, whilst I'm here, I'll tell you a little bit about a stone that I found in uh, Latchmore Brook, which is just a few yards to the south, I'll show you shortly. I found it about uh, three or four weeks ago. Now, I don't know if you can see, I might have to put a photograph up on screen, there's a, a little hole through it. It's called a hagstone. Well, to tell you a little bit more about it, let me refer back to Juliet's book. Now, I'm going to have to uh, ooh, put me glasses on. I'm getting old. Here we go. Now, some people considered that uh, these stones with holes in them possessed medical powers when suitably treated, which uh, entail potentizing by the light of a full moon for three consecutive nights when the stones were hung on cords and given to sick persons to wear. And beyond remedial powers, the moon potentized stones were held to give also increased mental and physical powers to the wearer. As I say, um, where is it? I say they're called hag stones locally and you'll often see them hung up to protect a home from Witch, witches and witchcraft and apparently if you look through the hole by the light of moon you'll see fairies, elves and witches. <laughs> oh what a lovely story. I'm going to keep it anyway. Right should we kick on? There's a lot of flies about here they're bothering you today aren't they? Yeah. Well <laughs> here is the aforementioned Latchmore Brook Although, as you can see, it's uh, bone dry at the moment. It does become a raging torrent in, in the winter. But uh, I say it's a good time of year to look for those uh, holy stones, or hag stones. I found mine just uh, literally down there. But, uh, well, the source of the brook when it's running is in the east, up near, well, just to the south of Roger Penny Way. It's a very peaceful today. That's uh, where we've just come down, the bench just to the left. And then this is, uh, let's say, Latchmore Brook. It carries on, um, well, it'll eventually flow out into the River Avon, but it becomes known as Huckler's Brook, uh, round about Ogden's. Okay, just an update on the, uh, the route. We've just come out of the Alder Hill enclosure and basically we're going to start heading on our homeward leg uh, westwards back to Ogden's and just here on my left is a, a pony pound that regular viewers will know a few of these dotted about the forest used primarily uh, in the annual pony drift where they round up ponies and uh, check them all health wise or remove any that need to be taken off the forest etc. They are used at other times of the, the year as well. And then uh, the enclosure here on the left is the Slowden enclosure. Now I was watching a YouTube video the other day that was been made by one of the uh, New Forest Agisters where he was explaining all about pony pounds and he mentioned that there were something like 40 pony pounds across the New Forest, which I was amazed. Um, Logan and I have come across something like 15 of them on our uh, video walk so far, so we've still got another 25 to bag and find. Oh, another lovely sight, <laughs> a couple of fallow deer. I had to quickly grab my um, camera to use the zoom, so 
it's going to be a very grainy picture, I'm afraid, and I also haven't been able to put my um, tripod up either, so it'll probably be wobbly, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some footage. I think they've spotted us. <laughs> oh, just what the doctor ordered on a warm day. Latchmore Brook. There's a little bit of a flow of fresh water there, so uh, I don't mind him uh, drinking it. <laughs> what a beautiful uh, setting. And uh, in the very far distance, there's uh, uh, Hampton Ridge, where we were right at the beginning. It's, I, say, I think this is one of my favourite uh, walks, you know. And there's uh, Windmill Hill and our car parked at the uh, Abbotswell car park. And then if I just pan round, it's a very popular area for livestock, ponies, cattle. It's called Latchmore Shade around here, not so much because shade from trees, but because there's, a, there's usually always a, a slight wind here and that uh, helps uh, keep the flies away. Although looking at their tails swishing, there's still a <laughs> bit of an issue today. And then one final pan, pan round to the south, there's the, uh, the Hasley enclosure. And then just to complete the 360 degree view, this is the, uh, the route that we've come from and back to... Uh, so it didn't take long for the Latchmore Brook to, to fill up, so I wonder if there are some springs further up. Oh, there looks as though some fish in there as well. Gosh. I wasn't expecting to see them quite as far upstream as this. Now I've got to somehow convince my hound to come out of the water now. He seems to be quite happy there, doesn't he? <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had another super walk today. Weather has been terrific and uh, well, there was so much to explore along the way, wasn't there? We're off to the... Uh, the Forester's Arms at Frogham for a swift half. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.